put the roof of the Apache on the bottom of the bed? Where'd, uh, where'd y'all find that truck for Derek? It was to one of our neighbors, just a couple of houses down from us, not even a quarter of a mile. An Man. old guy had it. And you got it for him when? When he was 15 years old. 15. When he was old enough to drive. Now look at him. <laughs> Couldn't even drive stick shift. I had incentive to learn how to drive sticks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't drive my own pickup line. So when you got it, though, it was already four-speed 396, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Third was out of it. Not, oh really? Not, not after, not until a couple years later. After you. That was after Derek bit, yeah. got a hold of it for no, a little while. It's, it's probably well before I. <laughs> Going around knocking out tailgates. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. I'm ready to tell these folks all about it. Um, so not only did Derek's dad have that '59, he just bought that square shorty right there, K10. What a cool place. I need to walk down by the river and get some footage. Sure. But look, K15. Man, why don't you come stand just right there? I'm just gonna, I'm almost gonna talk to you, man. There you go. Look, he's ready. All right, guys. <laughs> if you don't know who Derek is by watching this video or the last couple of videos, Derek is. Uh, wow, that sun's coming up behind your head. Kind of crazy. Um, no, we're good now. Derek is, uh, well, he's the guy that helped facilitate the 59 cell with his dad. He went and picked up Boise the Burb. Mm -hmm. Been working on it. I've just been shipping him parts out. He's just been tinkering on that thing, getting it ready for the road. So I got to say thanks, man. Yeah. It's just super awesome. I really appreciate, you know, everything you've done. And this is really cool to finally be here at your dad's place. Picking up the 59, about to make a huge road trip back at home. But before we do that, we're talking about your 70 GMC K15 that you've had for a very, very long time. So give us a little bit of the backstory on this thing. So this is a pickup that was literally probably less than a quarter mile away from where I grew up. Yeah. And I had no clue that it was even there for many years. So like, like the 59, I saw this when I was hunting, I was about bird hunting, so I saw this sitting behind a shed, but it's too far to see and I didn't carry binos in your bird hunting or whatever. Yeah. So I could see the green from far away and never knew what it was. So come when I was 15 looking for pickups, we drive by his house all the time and never could see behind it. The guy pulled it out in the front and we're like, holy crap, it's a short box, 67 to 72 pickup. And- Four wheel like, drive. Four wheel drive, exactly <laughs> what I wanted, half ton and it, this is what it was and so um we went and asked the guy if he would sell it he was kind of hesitant at first but he's like well it's been sitting behind my my shop for many many years and uh gave us a price we were there the next day and it's been mine for over 20 years now so man just crossed the 20 year anniversary yeah. in october yeah, right october i mean that's something you should keep up with i love that you did i put it in my phone calendar it says <laughs> happy 20 year anniversary <laughs> yes that is so rad oh man yes i love that you have that kind of affinity for these trucks i yeah. mean that's 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 why we become friends because for we sure. share you know a lot of similar passions hunting and trucks and all that yep. so let's start at the ground up tell us a little bit about the wheels and tires the wheels are from a summer that i worked construction all summer long to to get these wheels and it had the like the white spoke ones on there which i yeah. think people like nowadays yeah they do wagon I wheels do not like those <laughs> I at all like i still either. don't like them i think they're ugly they like i'll cheap. go with i'll go with the solid steelies that accept hubcaps yeah. over wagon wheels for sure but i bought these wheels and a set of like muddy tires for this thing when i was like 16 saved all my summer earnings for it and put it on there and been limping along all these years since so and then i just got these uh, toyo mts what size are they they are 255 85 r 16. they're the oh, tall, the size tall skinny you can call them pizza cutters whatever you want but this is like quintessential like old school tall skinny this is what this truck should have on there yeah not I that agree. to get you fat tire guys but this this looks clean <laughs> yeah and it's the exact same tire we put on smoky too exactly. and you know we've kind of got a similar look going on boise uh, as well so i love this specific tire in that size on these trucks to get them really stuffed in here in the in the the right way and in a way i think kind of looks period correct tell us a little bit about or what you know about the suspension i don't know at all it's, a, it's original suspension um since, since i bought it so it definitely needs updated um gonna do i think one of those tough country two and a half but it's it's got the guy i bought it from did a lot of stuff to it 
some I, I like, some I don't like so much. Most of it I don't <laughs> yeah. like customizing it, but he has dual shocks all the way around, and it's about, my guess is about a two, two and a half inch lift. Yeah, which um, I actually like the stance. Like, I love the I love the lift a lot. I mean, I think it looks good. So, wheels and tires, stance are, are pretty well dialed in, and I know that you want to do some future things that we'll talk about in a minute, but uh, tell us a little bit about the drivetrain and really how this thing came from the factory based off what we know on the spit sheet and then what's, what's actually been done to it since. Yeah, so Spitz sheet would say it's a 292 uh, six-cylinder uh, with a three on the tree. Um, Which would have been a killer combination. It would have been, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the guy I bought it from did a lot of stuff to it. Like I said, some I like and some I don't. But he took it out and uh, replaced the three on the tree with four on the floor with a granny low gear, which is cool. But, you know, I don't use it a ton anymore. You never first gear. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like when, back when I was younger, we were out bebopping in the hills and stuff, yeah, yeah. maybe crawling up a hill or something like that. But not not so much anymore. This is, a, this is just a cruiser. Yeah. But he replaced it with a 69 engine out of a, like a C20 pickup. It's a 396 pickup yeah. uh, engine. So it has a little different heads than the car, but it's got tons of torque. And I think that's why I put it in here. It's for towing. Yeah. Um, so you could tow a lot of stuff. And it runs good. Now, yeah. So, it runs so good. Let's, yeah. let's fire this thing up real quick. How about we do that? Okay. Let me tell you about the shift and everything. All right. It's knob here. You want to do that real quick? This knob? Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. So this is definitely not factored at all. This was in high school because I thought that was cool. My dad had a beer tap and I replaced this when I was like 16 and thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's Olympia beer. So I've had that since high school. But I, I have my normal stick shift, this the black one. But the reason it's gold right, like this is because um, it's from my grandpa's 67 tool drive short box pickup that I was actually trying to buy, but I never ended up getting it because it was too rusty and too much of a project and already have this one. Oh, I gotcha. So, it's so a, that came off of that truck? It's, it, he had a stick shift on the floor like this and he had a, this gold shift knob. And I didn't get the pickup. Um, I, I'm sad I didn't get it, but it was a, a ton, a ton of work. And I yeah. already have this and this is this is extremely expensive right now. Yep. Um, so, but my uncle um, sold it to another guy, but took this for me so I can have my grandpa's that 67 cool. shift knob. So it's kind of, it's it's not the coolest thing in the world, but it means something to me. So yeah, absolutely. And I'd say that this is a truck worth putting money in. For sure. One hundred percent. You just don't find these sitting around every corner anymore. sounds yeah. perfect <laughs> a lot of work to get it running again so. yeah yeah what is uh what what was all that like well so about 10 years ago uh, right after i got out of college um, i was driving around i used to have a winch on here so a lot of extra wiring yeah and so i was driving around and uh something happened where it fried my wiring so i had some kind of ground that didn't you know wasn't connected correctly and i think it's because of my winch but uh it's fried everything, so this thing has not been running since about 2010 on a no regular kid. basis. Yeah, so um, finally bought a house over in you know the Idaho area and got this back and started working on it about three years ago. Yeah, and then I I uh, took it to a shop to get it fixed because I was beyond me. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah, man, I get it. And. Um, I, they, they wouldn't touch it unless I rewired the whole thing. So he said I had like voltage coming from my bedside. So, oh my gosh. So he said, you know, no, I'm not touching it until you do that. So I had to rewire the entire pickup. Man. So when did you get that done? I just finished that right before you came. I did, I did I, it's out of my mother-in-law and father-in-law's house for about a year while we were buying a house. But I did all the cab and then the rear so I could drive it a little bit, but the lights hadn't been done. And so yeah. Robbie, um, Want me to drive the pickup out yes, here to I Adrian, did. so I needed to get my lights going because I don't want to be Cinderella. I have to be home for dark. <laughs> right. So. Well, I'm uh, I'm really glad you got motivated, or that I was at least yeah. helping you get motivated for to sure. uh, to get it out and drive it uh, uh, even a longer distance because you really weren't even driving it that far, obviously with no lights and stuff. No, just so this is the longest you've driven it in a decade. Uh, well over a decade. Well yeah, over so, a decade. Yeah. And how far did you drive it today? How, how many miles is it out here? Uh, 60 miles. Yeah, 60 solid miles. We rode behind him in Boise all the, all the way here, and man, 
Y'all have seen that footage. You saw it rolling out here. So if you want to hop out, let's talk a little bit about what your sort of future plans are for it. Sure. Oh, and real quick, he's got some of the original paperwork out here. So here, obviously, here's the manual. And then... Wasn't there something really cool that you were pointing out on this? Well, it's, so I grew up in Ontario, Oregon, um, and that pickup was bought out of Payette, Idaho, which I, I grew up out in the country, and now I lived less than a mile away from that town right there that pickup was originally bought from. So. Wow, and here's part of the build sheet right here that would have been in the seat. Um, other paperwork in here, receipts and I guess records and that sort of thing. I really do. What your points are supposed to be at and your spark plug gap. And... <laughs> Just that's just some really cool paperwork to have. I I love it. That's for sure. Um, yeah, man, six nine seventy, so cool. And the thing isn't really all that rusty, right? No, rocker pants and like cab mounts and stuff like that. But but it didn't look like the it didn't look like the outer rocker had a had a ton of like rust through. This this side is a little bit more, but yeah, they're 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 not terrible for I guess compared to some. Uh, yeah, some of the stuff that I own. Rigs or <laughs> Minnesota, where it's real bad rust. So. Yeah. Well, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about what your future plans are for this thing, from a realistic perspective, and and then from a man. If I had all the money in the world, what I would do to this truck. So hit me with sort of the realistic perspective first. Realistic perspective is, you know, I'm just kind of rebounding from not driving it for, you know, over ten years. So I'm trying to kind of um, get it so it's safe and yep. comfortable driving. My plan is to tear all the suspension out and redo that, the leaf springs, everything that yeah. needs to be done. So getting that done is important to me and then really trying to get it as factory as possible. I'm yeah. trying to undo some of the stuff the guy did. Um, he did a lot to it that you know I'm not a fan of. So get it back to kind of its <laughs> factory shape. What's funny is that you still you still feel that way 20 years 20 years from you know when you bought it yeah. you know it's like yeah. i've had 20 years to kind of think over yeah. what i want to do differently from what the guy did and i just i think it's awesome I, I love the i love the plan like i said it's just such a a cool truck to put money and time into yeah and and most of those 20 years i didn't have any money so it was more <laughs> it was more getting keeping it on the road and you know like I told you, the the proudest thing I am of this pickup is I've held on to it all yep. these years, and and I've, you should be very proud. I got offered a lot of money for it a, a while back, but I never. And it, money doesn't mean anything to me on this pickup, so yeah. it, this pickup means way more to me than money does. So, man, I'm so glad to hear you say it because I I want to know exactly where this thing is, and if, if you've always owned it, then I'm gonna know where it is yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, so if you had all the money in the world, what would you do to it? I'd probably tear all the body off and um um. Do the frame get the frame all good to go and uh you know possibly you know the 396 is nice i'm still not a fan of it yeah you know, just because um you know i didn't get into the weeds of kind of the the mechanical stuff that was going on with it but it's just a finicky motor really um, it's not an easy cruiser it's a four speed you know with a granny gear yep. and you know ideally I, I i hate to say this but i'd like to put an ls in yeah it. no you don't have to hate uh, to say that <laughs> you know i'd like to you know be able to just go out chuck or hunting or you know buck yeah. hunting or anything like that and it just has 20 miles a gallon and you know yeah, and like we we're talking about yep. cruising on the highway at you know 70 miles an hour at you know two two something rpm yeah. so yeah and getting decent gas mileage mm -hmm. and something that you you know you might feel a little more comfortable throwing that young son in here yeah hank sure. needs a hank needs a little seat to ride in and yeah. it's a good safe truck to ride in right M mama mama don't think he's coming in here for a while so <laughs> She thinks I'm ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. that I'm sounds like to, my wife. I'm proud to put some better seatbelts in here. I hear you. Hey, stuff. the good thing is you got three points already. Oh, do they? Yeah, you just pop this little plug out right, right. here. In fact, I'll just show you. Yeah, you see that little plug right there? Oh, dang. You pop that little plug out, and there, actually, I can't, I'm not showing it real well there. You pop that little plug out right there, and there's a, it's threaded in there. Oh, nice. And you literally can just buy aftermarket three point harnesses, you know, screw it in there. Bolt it in down here and you're ready to go. That's exactly what I've done in Teddy. This truck is one of my favorite trucks I've filmed in a long time. I'm not just saying that because I'm here with you. Uh, I don't say that a lot on the channel, I don't think. But uh, it is, it's just cool. I mean, I, I think I told you the other night, I've had a couple of these short bed K10 6772 trucks in nowhere near this condition. And this one is just, man, it's just got it. 
-hmm. it's got the look it's got it's got the right recipe so i'm really glad you have it and that you know you're gonna keep pouring some love and time and money and all that into it yeah it's not going anywhere for sure so anything else you want to tell the audience at home about this thing no it's it's i've owned it since i was 15 um and that's the the best part about it and the worst part too because because yeah. you can see the tailgate doesn't match and that's that's a that's a 15 16 year old mistake yeah um and some of the other stuff so but i knew somebody was going to ask about that so i'm glad you at least addressed it <laughs> yeah so it you know it wasn't perfect the tailgate that was on there wasn't perfect but um i unfortunately in high school did you know something stupid with my buddies and, <laughs> yeah, and pinched and the tailgate right here pretty good did you really and then pinched it into this this uh, fender right there so yeah so I well, the good get... thing is you found a good gmc gate i mean that is a good gate you can tell yeah so. I, had, I had to drive to preston idaho where napoleon dynamite <laughs> <laughs> i think it. that's the first time napoleon dynamite's been mentioned on the channel yeah. i like that no, i drove to preston idaho to get this so <laughs> Well, Derek, I love it, man. Thanks for uh, just thanks for being an awesome friend. Yeah. Thanks for you know holding on to that '59 for a year and helping me out with the burb and just really being you know all in on this dumb idea that I have to drive this thing all the way back across yeah. the country. Good. And uh, yeah, I love the truck. I mean, I love it. So I appreciate it, man. Yeah. yeah. No All right, guys, that's going to do it for at least our time in Boise and in the, the, the area. We're in Adrian, Oregon right now at Derek's um, family farm. But we are uh, we're about to embark on a 30-hour journey back home with that Suburban towing that 59. So we'll probably bring you another part of the video that has some of that in it. I don't know how I'm going to split this up because we've recorded quite a bit over the last couple of days, but we're heading back to Georgia and we're driving that burb and we're towing that 59 and I'm pretty pumped about it. I hope we make it. <laughs> That's going to do it for United About Trucks. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. If you haven't, comment it down below on what your favorite part of this video is. Definitely let us know. I can tell you that if it's one that includes this K15, this is one of my favorite things. I love this truck. I rode in it last night and I, I just... I love it. It's such a cool truck. So anyway, smash that like button if you like what you've seen, and we'll catch up with you next time right here on United by Trucks. Man, man, what you smell? Huh? What you smell? Huh? What you smell? Huh? What you smell? You smell something good? You been playing? You playing? Pretty? You playing? Go play. Go play. Go play. Yeah. That's what happens when you're over here filming another truck and they just get started. Hey, good job, guys. <laughs> Wonderful job. Too bad U-Haul doesn't have winches. Cue the music.